Hey guys, what's going on? This is Seth from the RE Tipster blog. In this video, I want to talk to you about five epic drone shots that can really do a great job of making just about any property look amazing. When you're shooting a video or pictures of a property with a drone, it doesn't take a genius to just take the drone, fly back a little ways, point it at the property and shoot. I mean, anybody can do that. There's nothing special about that. But I have sort of discovered as I've been playing with my drone for the past several months that there are a few shots that look good on pretty much any property. And it has a lot to do with being able to fly the drone in a certain pattern and usually moving it very slowly and tilting the camera in certain directions. If you shoot these shots just right, they can just do an amazing job at making you look like you're some kind of Hollywood movie producer because they just look so smooth and really show the property in its best possible light. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five of the shots that I've kind of nailed down as just being like standard requirements for every property. And as I think you're gonna see, they look pretty great. And it doesn't take an amazing professional drone pilot to do this. With just a little bit of practice, you can most likely achieve these same kinds of shots too. So stick around and I'll show you what I've come up with here. So this first shot I call the descent because the idea is to just start above the property and slightly in front of it or behind it and then slowly lower the drone down while you're tilting the camera up so you can kind of track on the property and just get a nice, well-rounded view of the top and the side. Anybody can fly over a property without changing the direction of the camera, but once you start developing and using your skills as a cinematographer, it can have a major and lasting effect on the final presentation of the property. A nice variation of this shot is to do the exact same thing, but start from the ground and then move up, tilting the camera down. It kind of gives a nice alternative view of the property that way. Both of these shots will give your footage a really nice cinematic and professional look because it actually requires some coordination to do. Not much, but a little bit. This next one is probably the easiest shot in the list because all you have to do is point the camera directly down and fly over the property. And whenever you use the overhead shot, you can start by hovering low over the focal point of the property and then move the drone higher in altitude while doing a very slow rotation. And it's very important to do this slowly if you want it to have that nice cinematic look. I like the shot because it introduces new surroundings and it's an exciting and interesting visual experience for the viewer. Another way to shoot the overhead shot is to simply start at one end of the property and fly to the other side as if you're sort of traveling over it. This shot isn't necessarily the most informative because it only shows the property's roof and footprint, kind of like a survey, but it's a nice way to add a perspective of the property that isn't typically seen with other shots in this type of video. Probably one of my favorite shots on this list is what I call the spotlight or the horizontal spotlight. The objective behind this shot is to fly horizontally around the house or the lot or the building while keeping the camera locked on the focal point of the property. And this kind of camera movement actually requires a bit of skill because you'll have to coordinate the timing of how fast you move around the property with how quickly you pan the camera to stay locked on the property itself. And I will say that some drones out there actually have a spotlight tracking feature, which allows you to lock onto any moving object like a car or a person, and the camera will stay locked on that point regardless of where you fly. In my experience, these systems have a harder time locking onto objects like buildings because they don't move. But nevertheless, if you're able to get your drone camera to recognize a house or a building as your focal point of your shot, this could potentially make the process much easier for you. This next shot I refer to as the reveal, and this is a great way to open or close any real estate video. In this shot, the idea is to simply approach the property from a distance and eventually fly over it while keeping the camera on the property. And again, this is one that will take a reasonable amount of coordination, though with a little bit of practice, you'll find it's not terribly difficult, especially if you have the responsiveness of your camera adjusted to be slower, which will make the camera movement much less jerky. I use this one all the time, and every time I see it, it always makes me sit back and just say, wow, that looks awesome. The great thing about this shot is that in many cases, you can also reverse the clip, and it's more of a backwards flyover, which keeps the spotlight on the property and whenever I get this shot right it doesn't really matter whether I play it forwards or backwards it looks awesome all the time so this is definitely a good one to include in your videos 
And the last important shot is what I call the slider. And the idea behind the shot is to put the camera at a level anywhere from six to 20 feet up in the air and just very slowly pan the camera back and forth around the property. And the effect that we're going for is to give the viewer a perspective as if they're like walking or driving around the property themselves. So it kind of gives them that on-site feel like they're standing right there looking at the property with their own eyes. It's a really nice shot that has a really cool perspective. And I just think it's a great one to include in your videos whenever possible. All right, guys, that's it. Those are five of my favorite drone shots. I'd say probably the biggest challenge with this is the sensitivity of the controls on your drone. Some drones act a little bit differently than others, and ultimately, I think what I struggled most with was just going slow enough so that it really gave the camera a good opportunity to capture every angle of the property that I was getting as I flew by. I think that's probably the biggest challenge. It's probably the biggest thing I still struggle with when I'm doing this, but if you can pull it off, it does a pretty amazing job. So. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I wish you all the best with your next real estate drone video. See ya.